29 years ago, I, am, um, I had a baby boy um, who I saw when he was three months old. Uh, and after that, I disappeared from his life and his mother's life. Disappeared in the sense that I was not there uh, at the time that he grew up in his formative stage. Uh, and eventually drifted away completely such that I lost all hope that I would ever, ever see my, my son. Now, there's so many things that I could say about why uh, this happened and how the drifting away uh, occurred. Um, but I might as well explain it in, 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 in more detail. And what really happened was, as I uh, grew by the year, looking at the number of years that kept passing by, I began to lose hope in getting in touch. Uh, the reasons for getting in touch, or not getting in touch rather, were quite, quite many in a sense, but inexplicable as well. Uh, but suffice to say that I never did, and I started having this pain uh, in my heart when I realized that the mother had gotten married, and that now there would be a battle for me to be able to get my child back because as I postponed my contacting my, my mother, the mother and her family to get my son, I was looking at other issues that made it impossible at the time. Uh, some were financial, others were other pressing issues that I could not, uh, you know, I could not uh, deal with on my own. But now the pain started and the pain was that every time I thought about him, and every time I thought about the mother as well and what I had done to their lives, I felt a lot of pain in my heart. And this pain continued and continues. It did not finish, it doesn't finish. And it feels like you have got somebody that you are not able to connect with, not able to hear, not able to touch or to feel. Uh, and the pain continues day and night. You're looking at a person who is perceived to be very happy. You know, you, um, he smiles, he talks, and he, but at the end of the day, he has this deep, deep pain inside him, knowing that he actually gave away something that God gives. On the um, 4th of December, uh, 2006, uh, an SMS came from uh, one of my sisters-in-law um, asking me to call a certain number in Australia. Um, I called her and found, wanted to find out what it was all about and she said that um, a certain man had called her from there and that uh, he had wanted my number. She declined to give it to him and instead got his number and uh, forwarded it to me to call him and she suggested that I probably send a text message. So I sent the um, text message and I just said, um, you know, hi, Alec, this is Swithin. The next day, um, a telephone call came around 12 hours uh, and I was at uh, these offices for the Kenneth Kaunda Children of Africa Foundation, KK's offices in Woodlands with some friends of mine. I saw it was an international call, so I decided to uh, to take it for a, a, a further distance from where we were sitting. And I, when I answered the other end of the line, asked whether I was Mr. Stephen Hangala, and I said yes, and uh, uh, it repeated again, is that Mr. Hangala? I said yes, and then the other voice there goes, wow. And ideally, I sense some excitement in the other voice on the other end of the line, and I'm wondering who this person could be and why they are so excited to be speaking to me. Um, I thought it was business, uh, since I get a lot of calls from uh, from business, uh, you know, uh, people right around, you know, the, the region and, you know, uh, the world. So ideally, it wasn't a surprise that we'd be talking about uh, a business and this person would probably have heard of my name and the company, etc. I was very flattered. So as the conversation went on, this person was talking about, uh, you know, having this was a very, very nice, uh, you know, uh, surprise and that he was talking to me and he was very happy to be speaking to me. And I also responded in a PR manner that I was very happy to be speaking to him too. And he mentioned that his name was Alik and he was uh, calling from Australia and he works for one of the biggest mines there. 
And that was it. My thought was now, what is co- the connection between this man in Australia and what I do? Uh, so I finally, after the PR issue is over, I asked him, I said, well, what can I do for you? And then he said, uh, I'm Alec. I said, oh, um, I know quite a lot of Alex who are my friends. And he said, I'm Alec, your son. And uh, from that moment on, my life completely changed. Um, there was this cold rush of blood that flew through me and I was like, <laughs> You can't explain the, the feeling, the strangeness. Okay, I've, you know, the lights went dark. You know, you know, it's like you had been hit from nowhere, and suddenly you were in shock, and you realized that your life had suddenly completely been transformed. What you feared would happen, because I'd vowed that I would not look for him since the years had passed and disrupt his life. He was living with the family, and he, his dad. And I had no right now to look for him. I was just mourning that I'd lost him for good. But I had always been saying, uh, and that when I ever talked to him, about him to my relatives, that if he wanted and found me, that's fine, but not that I'd look for him. So this day, it just I just froze. And I, th- I think my words were, oh my God. I kept repeating, oh my God, oh my God. And you look up in the sky and the world has suddenly changed for you. You're talking to your son who you haven't talked for a long time. And then the other side of the line, he was saying, don't worry, he says, oh my goodness, you know, I've been looking for you all over. I can't remember the exact words he used, but something to the effect that uh, I just wanted to thank you for being my father and uh, for bringing me into, into this world. And you know, for being my father and for bringing me into this world and that if it hadn't been for you as my father, I wouldn't have been living here in the life I'm leading. And I wanted to thank you. And I broke down. I said, can I call you back? Because I wanted to compose myself. He said, no, 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 no. Uh, don't cut the line because you may go away for good. And uh, I asked, I said, do you know that you'd have haunted me to my grave if I hadn't, uh, you know, if I hadn't uh, uh, talked to you or found you because I was still in a confused state. And I said, you know, every day I've been praying for you and for this moment to come and not knowing how to react. And my son told me that uh, you know, he had been looking for me as well and told me about a lot of other things that had been happening to his life. And we, we started talking. I can't remember much of what we said, but at the end of the day, I just asked for his email address so that I could tell him how much I loved him and how much I had been, had been in pain not knowing where he was, what he was doing, and that I would never, ever, never, ever uh, speak to my son or even see him again. So, yeah, the story now started from there. We communicated by email, sent me pictures, and you know, I saw these pictures for the first time. Highly emotional experience, and then you know, back and forth, and we started talking to each other almost every day up to today. And we just, you know, uh, immediately, you know, there was this dad son issue and but out of all this I think one thing struck me most and what he kept on telling me about forgiveness and that he didn't want me to remember what had happened in the past and that we can't control the past but we can control the future and you know the both of us can begin to work towards towards a better future so I, I, I tend to look at myself now in a different light you have this person who is your son you do something like that, you regret what you've done, you're miserable for the rest of your life. Outwardly, you're happy, but inside, you're, you're suffering, and then suddenly, your life changes. You've found your son, and he's forgiven you, and he's coming back into your life with love. And so I realized, I think it's about time that each parent, each father of a child who has gone through my experience must try to avoid, as much as possible, avoid doing what I did and which is full of regret and fortunately uh, mine is a happy ending story that never happens so um, he's coming in in 24 hours uh, actually less than 24 hours he's coming through and we shall be seeing each other for the first time so that's uh, that's that's what happened feelings up I don't know I'm happy apprehensive is he going to like me 
you know, what are his expectations of his father? Mm -hmm. Am I going to be a disappointment to my own son? You know, after all this, he realizes, oh my goodness, this is what dad is like. Uh, so many things going through my mind, but obviously, I I think this is the oof, I don't know I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I'm not very sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Shall I invite the members of the government, the opposition and the NGOs to come closer so that we can be one family. Spread the NGOs that side. If they can come and disagree with the rest of us, then we shall have an afternoon together. Then later we shall break into the more informal group. But right now, please, so that we can unite together in one purpose.
the first order of business of course will be to invite the Lord to join the manifest. The drinks shall be coming. I shall ask Aunt Claire to say a prayer to open. Aunt Claire is very, very critical in everything that has been here and that's why I'm inviting her to open this afternoon's proceedings with a prayer. Aunt Claire is the one with her. Angela Davies hairstyle. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Most kind and loving Father, we thank you so much for uniting us in this manner. Heavenly Father, you allow things to happen, Heavenly Father. To strengthen us in different ways and for us to grow in so many different ways. We thank you so much, Heavenly Father, for our nephew, our brother-in-law, our son, Heavenly Father, who is with us today, Heavenly Father. Mighty God, help us, Lord God Almighty, to just cherish such moments, Heavenly Father. Lord God in heaven, we thank you so much for the food that has been prepared, for everything, Heavenly Father, and for everyone who has put their hands together to make this function a success. We thank you so much for everyone that is here. Please let the day go well. It is through your son, Jesus Christ, that we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Thank you very much for that prayer. We shall serve you. Major Alex Jingola, please, would you please stand and just wave nicely round, round like this. Everybody would be here. How much am I getting in celebration to say Maja welcome home and so all of us all of us together at once and in unison we shall all say the words Maja welcome home when I give the cue of course so, when I, one two three when I four we shall all say Maja Welcome home. Let's go. One, two, three, four. Masha, welcome home. All right. And there's only one way a Tonga becomes Mutonga. We have a special drum and a special beat which is played only, and believe you me, it's not played for anyone. It's played for only those. And therefore, right now, Ngomaya Bugai. by my younger brother about the arrival of this gentleman. I was excited, confused, expectant, and uh, really anxious. And then he assured me that 
Your anxiety will be resolved on the 20th of this month. This is about two weeks ago. So I said to myself, seeing is believing. I'll wait. And the speed with which the weeks moved was so fast that yesterday I was checking my card and, oh my goodness, tomorrow. So we are excited. I hope everybody is excited as Mr. Chumuka to see you back where you belong. Um, time doesn't allow us to introduce you individually, but all this, there's nobody who is not a relation. All this, you are your relations. It will be easier for us to remember you, but for you to remember all these faces is quite a challenge. Except one. Uh, except you remember one. one. There, there, there. <laughs> <laughs> except one. Okay, at least you have one already on your side. <laughs> So my friends and relatives, um, this is a very momentous occasion, like the master of ceremony said. I can assure you, those who live my age, if you witness occasion, more than one occasion of this kind, you are more than blessed. Me, I'm very happy. This one is more than enough as I wait to go to the other side of the, it's not the world, to the other side. This is more than enough. My friend, you have done me honor because I've experienced something that I nearly missed in my long life. And then on behalf of the family, I want to thank you, Ali, most sincerely from the bottom of my heart for what you have done to us, the honor you have done to us the courage, the determination, the commitment, the love you have shown for us to find us. We were in hiding for quite a long time. And without your effort, maybe would not have managed to link up. But thanks to your effort, your determination, and the love and the spirit in you, you made the effort to look for us. And here we are. We are receiving you in that in style. And the drum that has just uh, you know, been sounded, as you said, is a special occasion for you. And I want to also thank your family, meaning your wife and children, for understanding what you are doing. When you get back home to your family, I also want you to convey on our behalf our gratitude and Thanks for what you, the honor you have done us, the big family. Uh, because I know that it, it must have taken you some time. And I want to say, uh, in the Catholic Church, we have a very big sacrament called the Sacrament of Reconciliation. And the Sacrament of Reconciliation <coughs> is for us when we offend the Lord and when we offend our neighbor to ask for forgiveness and reconciliation. I know that in the course of your life, there must have been many questions you have asked about who you are, and some of them you could not answer because there was no connection. The people who should have answered the questions were not there to answer them. So I only saw yesterday I received a copy of the mirror, and the Professor Clive Malone Dylan Malone, has written a very beautiful uh, article called The Power of Forgiveness. And my appeal to you is for you to forgive us for our shortcomings, for our weaknesses. But I want to also to assure you that as you grow older in life, you find that life is very complicated and complex. And if you don't learn to forgive, then you should not, it will be also difficult for you to ask you to be forgiven. So I want you to really open your heart to us. Whatever wrongs may have been committed in the past, we have now started a new chapter. And I think we should be forward looking, forgiving, loving, and, you know, be a real family. So also my relatives and the friends, or you must have Alik Macha. Maneso. So I must have a manja at it. Why to Maneso or you regularly? Mungo Zihalesda. Why do you took us 
Thank you very much. We invite him and Maja to come so that we see the two of them looking together. But if you get confused at who the father and the son is, don't blame you know. These days, because the way children eat, they grow quickly. Those of us from the old days, we have refused to grow old. If I told you how old Uncle Mark was, you would say you are lying. He looks 45. Huh? For example, I'm 27. I just had a year since 27. <laughs> I just celebrate anniversaries of my birthday, but otherwise I'm permanently... I'm 37 anyway. Then I'm anniversaries of my 37th birthday. Anyway, I will very shortly ask them to come forward. Mr. Sidi Nangala, shall we see you? You were not here when I introduced you, please. And uh, where's the missus also? Ah, uh, please stand up. I mean, you were not here. We took over your home. Can we give your home back to you? All right, so I'll ask the two of you to come forward. I shall call upon the son to come forth. Maja, please. Come and join your parents. I will ask you to hold hands as at now together and then you lift the hands up and we shall know that at this moment we are bonded forever. Shall you? So I shall, and um, I mean, I know it should have come from elsewhere, but here it is. I shall hand over to my immediate young brother the contents of the box, and having handed over, he shall do the rest. Mujitonga. <laughs> I don't know what would have done if it was a good village. Nanku, Chayangombe, Nanku, Busan Saila Voloa, but Toma Christo, come closer. The NGOs never mix, please never mind, those are the NGOs. The NGOs. But uh, because Tuliva Christo, and as uh, Majimuga has already said, uh, reconciliation and peace and love and forgiveness. 
what is in this box. And then, then Mlavona uh, anyway, to show. Okay, the leg I break, okay. Well, finish your sentence.
but we had it all. Yes, had all the love we could possibly find. God brought this miracle. This miracle was you. Bringing you love and a new start. A chance to be loved and to love more. God brought this miracle. This miracle was you. Like the prodigal son, God has sent you back to us. He intended for this. A time such as this, we may not know why. We might never understand, but he had it in his plan. Just when we thought we had it all, yes, had all the love we could possibly find. God brought this miracle, this miracle in you, bringing you love and a fresh start, a chance to be loved and to love more. God brought this miracle, this miracle was you. God brought this miracle, this miracle was you. Ah, oh, <laughs> uh, now we cross over to the world famous Chona and Chona. Ah, uh, this is Chona and Chona. Um, it's uh, originally sang by George Benson, copied by Whitney Houston. <laughs> And copied again by Chona and Chona. <laughs> Without copyright. <laughs> Without copyright. If we are sued, Alec, please make the connections out there. <laughs> I believe the children are our future Teach them well and let them lead the way Show them all the beauty they possess inside Give them a sense of pride To make it easier Let the children It's okay. I'm going to I'll ask Sweden to come and do something right now. Sweden! Or on Wimbo! Come, Boga, what you doing? I'm going to to So, I'm going to go to the Mujibe mbati choni. Mujibe mbati choni.
During our communication, uh, which has been quite intense um, with Mr. Hangala here, we, we started singing songs to each other in terms of what we were feeling. And uh, one of the songs that he was singing at one point in time is this one that we wanted to sing to him. So, um,
almost like being in love. In love. I've got a smile on my face for the whole family. Why it's almost like being in love. Wonderful. Neza mwari la. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes When I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine all I would do is forever, forever worship I can only imagine I can only imagine Thank you. 